Hi, boys and girls. You know, since we started back to school, we've been talking about expression, about how artists use different art materials and different ways of creating art to express ideas and feelings. And we were playing around with lines and shapes to express different feelings. And since Halloween will be here before you know it, I thought we could have some fun expressing some of the uh, feelings that are associated with Halloween. And I've drawn some pumpkins here, so I'm practicing using line and shape to draw these different expressions on my pumpkins. I have one here that's just kind of silly and fun. This one is scared, and maybe this one is scared of this guy right here. And this one looks like it ate something kind of yucky. I don't know, maybe the poison apple or something. So before we get to creating this kind of thing, let's look at and talk about how we can draw pumpkins to make them look really real. So I'm going to put these guys aside. And I've got a fresh piece of paper here. And I've also got a little pumpkin. Now, this is a pretty standard shaped pumpkin. And when I look at it, it could be, it could kind of fall into the circle family. There's a lot of curved edges on a pumpkin. It's not squared off at all. It's really got a lot of roundness to it. And when we're first, first starting out as artists, a lot of times we will draw pumpkins that look something like this. Okay. I like to call this a ping pong paddle, if you've ever played ping pong, okay? Sort of looks like a ping pong paddle. It's a good start, but here's how we can kick it up a notch. To really make this pumpkin look like a pumpkin, we just have to add some curves, not only to the outside, but to the inside. Now I'm going to really stretch this and make this, I'm not going to make it as perfect as this one. I'm going to make it a little lumpy and bumpy because you know pumpkins come in all shapes and sizes. So I think I've got a pretty good outline. But now look at the difference between these lines and the lines that are on the pumpkin itself. They're not straight up and down like a pencil. They curve. They curve. See look at this line right here it lines up with the very edge here. So I want to curve my lines and I like to start, I'll give myself like a, a point right at the stem, right where the stem meets the pumpkin itself. And I want to curve it around and bring it down almost to the bottom. And I'll do another line right here that's curved. Look already, look at how it's starting to look real. And here's another curved line and another curved line, and maybe one more. If you can get four or five, that's awesome. Now, we gotta draw our face and turn this pumpkin into a jack-o'-lantern. I'm gonna put this little guy aside. And when we do the face, here's something that we also have to pay attention to. And this is all part of growing. You know, when we are artists, we practice, we practice. I don't ever expect anybody to be perfect, but if we practice, we make progress. So if I want to make just a traditional Halloween jack-o'-lantern, I might start with some triangles for the eyes. This is the kind of jack-o'-lantern that I knew about, you know, that I saw a lot of when I was a kid. And there you go. So that's old school jack-o'-lantern. But I have a problem here. Look at these lines. They're inside the mouth. Like this is a hole that's cut in the jack, inside the pumpkin. These are holes that are cut in. I can't have those lines sitting here. So I have to use my eraser. And I gotta erase them. Now, if you're using marker, that's okay. You can still make this happen. You just gotta kind of do it backwards a little bit. I'm going to draw a smaller one over here so you can see what I mean. I can draw a pumpkin 
and I can draw the face first if I have to use marker or something a little more permanent like crayon or colored pencil and then I can draw the lines around it. I can stop at the eye and come down and I can stop at the nose, stop at the mouth, pick up on the other side, same thing here. Okay, So you can do it either way if you're using pencil or marker. Then from here, the sky's the limit. You can use any kind of colors that you want. If you want your pumpkins to be traditional orange pumpkins, go for it. I like to do different colors because, you know, we're in the art room and we don't have to make everything the exact color that it is in real life. So I used some zigzag lines here to make a shape that looks like a scary mouth. I've got some triangles. I've got some sort of wavy lines that I use to make this mouth. I use some curved line. I drew a curved line with a point at the end to make these eyes here. So think about the kinds of lines you're going to use and then think about the kinds of colors that you might want to use. Whatever art material that you're using, whether it's colored pencil, crayon, or marker, um, you will have plenty of choices in your colors. And one last thing, look at how I used the space. Everything is not like bunched up in a corner. Everything is not super teeny tiny. I really tried to fill the space. So I want you to have fun with this. Think about those expressions that you want to convey with these pumpkins. What kind of message do you want to send with all of these pumpkins? And I can't wait to see what you're going to do. See you soon.